freedom. We'll be having the old fireworks and lots of oohs and ahs and picnics and cookouts and other behaviors that I don't equate with freedom. But we need to understand that what freedom really is. And Christ says, whom the he says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. That's John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. In verse 36, he says, Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Now, I want you to understand that. I'm talking about it because we've been talking about being set free from the orphan spirit, being delivered, being released, being changed from glory to glory. It says rescue on the, on the, on the power, power here. Not that. Downstairs. We don't have one downstairs. There's no oh, downstairs. for the signal, mm -hmm. it's the one that says headphones, Jason. They must have turned it down. All the way to your left. That's your right. This on my right. left. Well, come on, Pastor Jim. My left. Stay's left. Up, 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 up. It says, it's a little tag on it. It says feed. Are you Excuse me. Okay. Happens when they happen there. Video feed? That's it. That's the one. Turn it three quarters of the way out. Okay. Done. The truth shall make you free. Say it. The truth, the truth shall make, make you free. free. Change it again. The truth, truth shall make me free. The truth shall make me free. I am free. I am free. Because the Son has set me free. Say it. The Son has set me free. Why? I want you to understand. We've been talking about being bound by that often spirit. Things that bind us to the point where we are utterly, utterly crippled. We're not able to do what we need to do in Christ. We're not able to live our life. We're bound by things like the performance track, the approval addict, the blame game, shame, addictions. All these things hold us down because we are not free. When Jesus said, I have come that you have, might have life and have it more abundantly. He said, the Spirit of the Lord has anointed me to preach good, the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to release the captives, recover his sight to the blind, free the oppressed, proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Now I want you to know something. When we, when we close this morning's message, we're going to stand up and quote that verse. Because that doesn't just apply to Jesus. Once you're free, He has anointed you. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. The power of the Holy Spirit is upon you. See, He didn't set us free so that we can go, oh, I think I'm He set us free so that we would be free to set others free. We'd be able to have that power and the liberty, not bound by shame or fear or worry about what someone's going to think of me. Or if I tell them about Jesus, they're going to not like me. They're going to think about Jesus free. They're going to think I'm a holy roller. I'm one of those born again. I don't care what it means. When we're free, those things don't matter. And the truth that Christ has set us free, we can't hold it in. Now, that's easy for me to say. I just came from a week of revival meetings and Everybody went out, and the, the numbers were, and, and I, I tend to have to believe them, even if I do wonder. In the seven weeks that they were here, they had 14,000 plus people who filled out the little cards that said, I've accepted the Lord or renewed my life. 14,000 people. Now, in my personal theology, I think that's absolutely wonderful, and I think it's time that if you're already free, you better be praying for those people, that God would send them here, because he said, make disciples, mm -hmm. not just change their mind. And the only place I go to make disciples is in the house of the Lord, yeah. period. So you need to be praying that God would send them in 
and for a local assembly so that they are empowered by the Holy Spirit, taught and instructed by His Word to go out and replicate themselves again and again and again. But that will not happen if you don't feel free. If you don't know that Jesus has come to give you life, to give you freedom, liberty. Now, I want you to understand something. I'm going to bounce around because I wanted to close in worship and I will not be able to do it. I want you to understand something that freedom is not. See, a lot of people think freedom means I can do whatever I want. I can act any way I want to act. I can say, I can shoot from the hip and say whatever I want, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of who it hurts. I can take drugs and drink any way I want. I can marry and give me a marriage. I cannot. I can divorce. I can do whatever I feel. If I hurt other people's in anger, it doesn't matter. Taking advantage of the people we love, stepping people on people to get our way up the ladder, it doesn't matter. I'm free. I'm free. As a matter of fact, if you've ever heard or read Rabbi Zacharias, he talks about freedom. But what most people want to hear is that you can do whatever you want. I'm free. But the moment you say freedom comes with responsibility, freedom comes with limitations. I can't be, I'm not free to go and kill Bill. I'm not free to walk into the bank and take all the money I want. I'm not free. Go out and drive, I'm going to say Dr. Dave's nice new car, but Dr. Dave's nice new car, the other Dr. Dave, I don't know if he's got a nice new car. I'm not free to go out and, hey, I'm taking this for spin. Oh, I got an accident, sorry, bye. I'm not free, because with freedom comes responsibility, general liberty. It's more than doing what we preach. It's more than fulfilling our lives, our lusts, and our passion. It's more than worry and despair and depression and neglect. It's not just living day by day, hoping we make it through to the next, never ever getting ahead. It's more than a daily routine, being free from the chains that the enemy has perpetrated upon us, the chains of bitterness and resent, of selfishness, of hurt, our financial burdens, of emotional struggles and problems, those chains are what we're free from. But I gotta tell you, we live in a world that talks about freedom. We live in a world where our freedom was birthed, had to be birthed at gunpoint by a musket, but it had to be birthed. We live in a world today where our freedom is defended by our soldiers. But I want you to know something. That's freedom. But see, that freedom didn't come so that we can do whatever we want. It came so that we can understand the truth of Jesus Christ. Understand what genuine liberty and genuine freedom is. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 5 to 8. I'll read them to you. It says, Thus says the Lord, who created the heavens and the earth and stretched them out, who spread forth the earth and all that comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness and I will hold your hand. I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people, a light to the Gentiles, to open the eyes, to open blind eyes, to bring prisoners from prison. Those who sit in darkness from the prison house, I am the Lord, that is my name. And my glory I will not give another, nor give Praise to graven images. Isaiah is simply saying, I have come that you, now he's speaking about the people of God, would have liberty so that you can liberate others. Romans says, what's that liberty mean? Romans 8.1, therefore, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. I gotta tell you something. Condemnation, that sense of not doing enough, that sense of feeling unworthy, that sense of failure, most Christians walk in. 
Romans says it clearly. There is no condemnation. You're free from being condemned. What Jesus said, if you remember the, the story of the, the woman caught in adultery, raise your hand if you remember. They wanted to stone her to death. And my philosophy is, where's the dude? I always believe that. Where was the dude? But what happened is, bottom line, they go to stone her, and Jesus writes something in the sand, and he never tells us what he writes. <clears throat> but again, my opinion is he wrote, where's the dude? <laughs> Because you can't commit adultery alone. So anyway, so he said, you without sin cast the first stone. And not a single person would have the courage to pick up a stone and to begin to stone this woman, which under the law they had every right to do because she was caught in adultery. And then all the men who are all up and on because they caught this woman in adultery. One by one, thought about it. And one by one, left. Because there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. looks at the Lord. And the Lord says, where are your accusers? And she simply says, well, they all left. Neither do I condemn you. Now, anybody know what he said next? Go sin and sin no more. more. Go and sin no more. He didn't say this is a get out of jail free. This isn't your free hall pass. He said, go, receive my grace, receive my mercy, receive my forgiveness, and sin no more. Let your life be changed. Be set free from the bondages of sin. Be free. Therefore, there is no condemnation. So I want you to understand something. The truth shall make you free. Say no condemnation. No condemnation. Oh, that, that, that wasn't very good. Say it again. No, no condemnation. Now I want you to understand something. Have you ever felt condemned? This week? This month? Now if it, if it did, it only came from two places. Your own mind. Your own insecurities, which you've been set free from. But let's just not go there right now. Or the enemy. If God says there's no condemnation, if nobody else is condemning you, what do you care what yourself is saying or what somebody else is saying? The truth has set you free. Listen to me. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who live not according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. It doesn't matter. Romans 8, 5, and 6 says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things above. For the carnal minded is death, but spiritual minded is life and peace. That word life is Zoe. So it's not just talking about eternal life. It's talking about the fullness of who you are. Every part of your life. Joy. Happiness, love, grace, all those things, and peace. The truth shall make you free. Now, if you listen to Paul, what he's saying is it's very easy to have life and peace. Live according to the Spirit. To the things of the Spirit. That means, forego that orphan spirit and know that you're the God. That God so loved you, He gave His Son. That Christ so loved you, He surrendered His life. That there's nothing you can do that will ever separate you from the love of God short of rejecting Him. 
that God is not finished with you, that if you live according to what He teaches, what His Holy Spirit instructs, what His Word says, you will have life and peace. And I want you to understand something. That doesn't mean the instant you accept the Lord, everything changes. I can tell you, there's a fight on your hand. I called last week, I titled last week, the fight for your heart. Because everything in this world is crying for your attention. Everything in this world wants your heart. The enemy wants your heart. Pastor Gail said, I don't know the song, I wish I did. But she talked about a song that one of her students wanted to sing. And it talked about worrying about the world and what they think and what they want to say and be concerned about this and be concerned about that. You know what that is? That's the enemy. Some liminal teaching. You sing it enough. But that's part of who you are. Without you even knowing. I'm older, so the only thing I can tell you is that the song that I hated the most was What's Love Got to Do With It? Mm -hmm. Just a secondhand emotion. But every human heart cries for love and acceptance. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, God loves and God accepts all of us. Just where we are, mm -hmm. just the way we are. However, the caveat is he loves us too much to leave us that way. He wants us to grow, to mature, to be filled with his presence, to be prospered, to be healed, to be whole, to be delivered, to move into his glory and his presence. He just doesn't want you to say, I'm loved. I'm still a wreck. I'm still poor. I'm still depressed. But I'm loved. How I mean, you know that's not enough? Romans 6, 3, and 4 says, Lord, not you know that as many as were baptized in That's what I want you to have right now. Today I want you to know that Jesus promised that you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. All across the nation, three days from now, everyone will be celebrating liberty. Everyone will be celebrating our independence, our freedom. As much as we, and I believe, that we live in a great nation. As a matter of fact, on a quick sidebar, I recently um, listened to somebody give their opinion of why the United States is left out of Revelation. We're not mentioned in Revelation of the great end times. Mm -hmm. And since I listen to all the other things and read all the other ones out there, I want you to know since we're left, whatever anybody else has ever said or told you is what? Does anybody know? It's conjecture. They're just guessing. Well, I happen to like this one a lot. So the reason the United States isn't mentioned in scripture is because we align ourselves with Jerusalem and God's talking about us there mm -hmm. as a nation of Israel. I like that. Don't know if it's true, but I'm, but I'm all like that one. <laughs> Much better than some of the things I came up with. I like that one. But the reason I say it is because there is freedom. You want freedom, we need to understand the words of the prophets of the Old Testament. The freedom of the souls of mankind. Liberty can be yours, can be theirs if we accept it in Jesus Christ. And I want you to understand something. It's more. <clears throat> it's more. And I don't mean to be offensive when I say this. It's more than praying a little prayer and signing a little card. Jesus Christ offers you genuine freedom. 
the chains that have held you down, the lies and the deception of the enemy, fear of failure, perfectionism, the need to succeed, manipulating others, all those things that you've done to try to be happy. When the answer has always been right in front of you. Jesus came. That you and I and all those who receive him, all those who are willing to accept him, are free from the bondages of sin and death through Christ Jesus. I want you to understand here this morning. I believe that God is calling all of us into a deeper relationship with Him. A new way, a better way. A covenant that will open blind eyes, break the chains of bondage, to give freedom to those who are captive, to give freedom to those who are held captive by the God of this world. Let me pose you a question. <coughs> Is this truth? Yes, it is. Okay. If it is true, then why are so many people struggling with freedom? when God has already given it to them, both in the church and in the world. I believe it's simply because this generation, as much as any other, if not more, have had their eyes clouded over, their minds succumbed to lies and deception of the enemy. While thousands and thousands of Americans, maybe even millions, will be celebrating our independence, our freedom, in that same context, thousands and thousands, millions upon millions, are bound. They might go to the parade. Here's something for you. You want to know this? I, I read this recently. The Bristol Parade, we know this is the largest parade, the longest running parade in, in the country. Do you know that Barrington and Bristol close all the bars until the parade's over? I wonder why they do that. I wonder why they do that. I really don't. I know why they do it. Because they know that as soon as the parade's over, as soon as they're done, they bought a lie that they're going to want to celebrate that freedom and try some kind of artificial means to dull their pain, their senses, so they don't recognize, they don't remember that while they say they're free, they're bound. I want to encourage you and assure you that God is the truth. That what he says is true. And that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. The truth shall make you free. Paul is telling us that if you love the Lord, if you walk in obedience to the gospel, you won't feel that condemnation. You won't walk around with your heads hung low, being tormented by the things of the flesh, the deceptions of the adversary. We won't allow life hurts and pains, especially those of our past, to make us feel 
as though we're no good and we cannot receive freedom and liberty and walk in the blessings and the promises of God. We shouldn't let our flesh pull us back into bondage or into some other spiritual prison of things that we've overcome and can overcome through Christ who strengthens us. We should understand that liberation and freedom have been given to us. Now we need to learn to walk in it day and night. Isaiah and the great apostle Paul and Jesus himself are simply telling us that only true freedom is found when we're in Christ Jesus. And Christ Jesus is in us. In order for you to walk in the truth, I need you to understand something. Before you can walk in the truth, what do you have to do? Anybody want to guess? Know the, truth. know the truth is good. More than that, though, but one step before knowing the truth. Seek the truth. Well, yes. Seek is great, too. One step before that, though. Hear the truth. Close. Oh, come on, help us out. Help know us. that there is a truth. <laughs> we live in a world where truth <laughs> is relative. There's nothing true. There's no standard. If you don't believe, if you don't believe there is a truth, you won't seek it, you won't know it, you won't find yourself going after it, because it all doesn't matter. But understand this, God declares that he is truth. God declares there is absolute truth. The reason we struggle, the reason our nation struggles, and we have stepped away from that. The reason the nation, I want you to understand something. Again, it's going back to where I've been all week, but I want you to understand something. Do you know the reason the world and the nation especially has pulled away from the fact that there's a divine truth, that there's an absolute truth, that God is the absolute truth? I want you to know something. It's your fault. It's my fault. Because you know the truth. The truth has set you free. But we have Lay down our arms and let the enemy have his way. Jesus is coming back. I can't wait to win. We no longer stand up for truth. We no longer make take a stance against unrighteousness and sin. Because we don't want to offend anybody. We don't want to hurt their feelings. We don't want to be looked down upon. We don't want to be judged. We don't want to be condemned. Because we have allowed that orphan spirit to corrupt our heart. But when the orphan spirit is delivered and the orphan mindset is broken, it's easy to stand and say, this is the truth. Most of the time when I make those kinds of stands, I listen to people say all kinds of things. I'm old. I'm old school. That was then, this is now. My response is always the same. Jesus Christ, yesterday, today, and forever. Always the same. If it was truth then, it's truth now. God never changes. We must understand that the truth shall make you free. So I said you have to believe in the truth before you can do anything else about it. It can't make you free if you don't believe in it. But how many of you know you can believe that there's a truth, 
You can believe in the truth, but not believe the truth. Do you understand that? Not to head if you don't. Not only do you have to believe that there is truth and that God is truth, you have to believe the truth enough to do something about it, to accept it, to walk in it, to obey it. See, if God says you're loved and special and you think you're worthless, you are, I hate to say this to you, you're sinning. You are calling God a liar. Hmm. Let me give you an example. And I didn't want to do this, but it fits in here, so I'm going to do it. How many believe God is my healer, God is my deliverer, God is my provider, God is my strong man, my high tower, God is for me, who can be against me? Raise your hand. Good. Every hand went up. Now I want to ask you something. Proverbs tells us there is the power of life and death in our tongue. So how many believe God is your healer? Not that anybody here would do this. When was the last time you called in sick? You know what I mean when I put air quotes? I, I can't tell you. I've watched a lot of Christians say, I, I, I'm going to call in sick. You don't look too sick to me. I, I, I'm going to call in sick. And listen to what happens. They call in sick, and they get sick. What is that? God, did God condemn me? Absolutely not. Out of the words of your mouth, you gave the enemy, the powers of the air, the powers of be, every right to torment you in your body. I struggle a great deal with that. I struggle with allergy, and I never refer to them as mine. Somebody asks me why, I say simply say, because they're not mine. God didn't give them to me the enemy, and I want them to go right back to hell where they belong. I don't want the pain. I don't want the congestion. I don't want the pill. I don't want any of it. I want to go right back where God, where the enemy sent it from, and I want God to set me free. I want to believe, and I don't call them mine, and I will not call them mine. I did for a long time. And I will tell you something. Well, I still struggle a little bit with them. They are better now than they have ever been in my life. And I'm waiting for God to give me total healing and deliverance. I don't know what he hasn't done it yet, but I'm believing him. And if he never does, I will still never refer to them as mine. They are the enemies. Mm -hmm. Because out of my mouth, once I say they're mine, the enemy has every right to use them against me. Once you tell a little white lie and stay homesick from work, so you can go, I don't care what you're going to do. You've given the enemy. You've spoken it into existence. You've given the enemy the right to torment you in your body. When you say things like, that's the way it always is for me, guess what? Even if 
you haven't had a drink in 41 years, you're still a recovering alcoholic. I want you to understand something. I understand why they say that. I understand why they teach that. But that particular truth is not a godly truth. The godly truth is, I have been delivered. That's who I was. I will no longer be that person. Amen. And I don't care what it is, an alcoholic, a liar, a cheat, an adult, it doesn't matter. I will no longer be that person. I have been set free. I'm a new creature. All things are passed away. All things are become new. God is my truth. Amen. Amen. Wow. That's all scary. I don't know if they have a song for this, but just let me start. Raise your hands to the Lord. And just take a moment. Lord, I just ask, Lord, that you fill us this morning. Fill us this morning with your Holy Spirit. The power to believe. The power to receive. Lord, let your anointing, let your spirit well up inside us. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.